It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member from St. Catharines. Thank you, Speaker. On Saturday, the YWCA Canada's annual week without violence campaign against intimate partner and gender-based violence came to a close. I had the privilege of speaking at a panel event that the YWCA Niagara hosted, where we heard from local service providers and experts in the field. Eye-opening statements were made and horrifying statistics were shared. Feeling called to take action, I rise today to recognize Elizabeth Zizerman from the YWCA Niagara Region, Nicole Ray J from Jillian's Place, Jennifer Guthra from Birchway Niagara, Nari Capri Car Cap Van New, sorry, from Toes, Niagara, and Mary Ellen Simon from Niagara Region Navis Native Centre for their leadership and commitment to providing a safe haven for women and gender diverse people across the Niagara Region. From strengthening enforcement to infusing much needed funding into our legal aid system to increasing social supports and focusing on funding court services. We need effective solutions that focus on prevention rather than dealing with the consequences of violence after it's been perpetuated. We need culturally sensitive supports that put ra racialized Indigenous women and gender diverse individuals first. We need to invest in housing, social supports and education. Let's be clear, prevention is better than cure. It's not about creating the next innovative project, it's about ensuring the essential supports are strong. Intimate partner and gender-based violence is everyone's problem. Acknowledge the problem exists is the first step in saving lives. Thank you. Thank you. I recognize the member from Burlington. Thank you, Speaker, and good morning, everyone. At the end of the summer, I had the pleasure of touring the new Brock University campus that is currently being built in my riding of Burlington. I was greeted by Dr. Mary Louise Vanderlee, the Dean for the Faculty of Education. Dr. Vanderlee and other faculty members have been recognized as contributing to one of the highest in institutes of education in the country. With almost 28,000 alumni, Brock University has been actively training educators to serve the next generation. I was happy to see the progress of the new Brock campus that will play a crucial role in shaping future generations of educators, equipping them with the tools they need to inspire and lead in diverse and dynamic learning environments. The new campus is not just a new building, it's an example of the advancement of educational excellence and innovation. As the only university in the GTA West corridor offering teacher education programming, I'm excited for the opportunities this new space will provide for students, faculty, and the broader community. Thank you. A member from Toronto, Dan Ford. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, recently children in a grade six French immersion class at Withrow School in my riding were preparing to meet the 20th teacher assigned to their class since the school year began. The school has not been able to provide a permanent teacher for this class this school year. As you can imagine, the students are demoralized and the parents are completely frustrated. This is not a new problem or an isolated problem in our public schools. In the spring, I raised a similar issue faced by students at Earl Grey School in my riding with the Minister of Education. No one in this room will be surprised to learn that the response was superficial and led to no action that would help the students. As one parent put it to me, underfunding and removal of supports in the classrooms mean that teachers are leaving the profession, burning out, or choosing not to enter teaching at all. Parents where they can afford it, are paying for after-school tutoring to try and get an education for their children. Speaker, I ask the Minister of Education to provide the funding and support that our schools need to provide the education that our children deserve. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It's my honour to rise today to recognize two outstanding individuals from my riding of Perth, Wellington. Recently, I had the pleasure of attending the Mount Forest Chamber of Commerce Awards, where we recognized the Mount Forest Citizen of the Year. Crystal, uh, Crystal Steffler and Crystal, uh, I may have not have grown up in Mount Forest, but got involved in the community shortly after making her new home there. 
and she's an outstanding active member of the Lions Club, volunteers with the Mount Forest Fires Works Festival, and is a personal support worker. In addition, she founded an initiative called the Child, Care, uh, Child, Child Cancer Blanket Project, which involves community members making blankets or quilts and donating, donating them to children's hospitals across Ontario. As one of her nominators put it, Crystal, she's always there. And the second individual I want to recognize is a bright young man named John Ray. No relation, Speaker. John was awarded the Youth Citizen of the Year Award. And he can be found on Saturdays during the summer at the Wellington North Farmers Market selling fresh produce from his family's farm. Both John and Crystal have a passion for volunteering and giving back to the community they love. Congratulations, John and Crystal, and thank you for all that you do for Mount Forest. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Waterloo. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a growing level of excitement in the region of Waterloo, especially on the 100th anniversary of St. Mary's General Hospital. Grand River and St. Mary's General Hospitals have put forward a plan to merge and bring the much-needed care to the region. This merger will help meet the needs of one of the fastest-growing regions in the province and take pressure off an already underserviced population. We, rec we, we recognize as a community that this is a needed hospital, and it will not only meet the health care needs, but also the economic needs of of our community in addition. Building on their 40 years of strong partnership, Grand River and St. Mary's will be redeveloping two existing sites and opening a new state-of-the-art hospital site in Waterloo Region by 2034. This new site will be built on the campus of the University of Waterloo, David Johnson Research and Technology Park. It is an ambitious plan that needs to be resourced. Working so closely with the University of Waterloo will also help spur innovation, attract talent, and support the continued economic growth, prosperity, and most importantly, the health of the people of Waterloo. I am sure that St. Mary's and Grand River Hospitals will continue to live by their belief that it is an honour to care for the sick. As they move forward and continue to deliver outstanding health care for the people of Waterloo Region, I want to emphasize Waterloo Region is truly building the future of care together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next member's statement, the member for Cambridge. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Air Curling Club just celebrated 175 years of, on October 5th. Oh, wow. That's longer than Canada's been around. The Air Curling Club has provided a safe space for people of all ages to be healthy, active, while enjoying a sport they love. And those stones are pretty heavy. The curling club has gone above and beyond which is expected of a recreation facility. Outside of curling, they have provided a space for community groups, businesses to meet, hosted food distribution, and for those experienced homelessness. I was very pleased to see our government awarded $38,500 through an Ontario Trillium Foundation grant to be used for much needed roof repairs and a new ice scraper. I wanted to say again, a very happy belated 175th anniversary to Air Curling Club as they continue to grow for another uh, probably couple hundred years. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Don Valley North. This come to my office. This distressed because the attendants have been living rent-free and utility-free for long periods of time. Meanwhile, small landlords in my constituents are struggling with mortgage payment and fear losing, losing their lifelong investment. Speaker, last year, 20% of tenants in Toronto were in rent arrears. Some of them are exploiting the processing delays at the tribunal. These bad actors are taking advantage of the system without facing any consequences. Speaker, the majority of tenants honor their lease, lease agreements. However, the professional tenants are committing theft. They are not only stealing from landlords, but are also undermining the rule of law and eroding trust in the system. If we allow this bad behavior to continue unchecked, we encourage its recurrence. Speaker, 
I was encouraged to hear the Premier mention potential reforms to the Landlord and Tenant Board in collaboration with the Attorney General. I hope the upcoming reform could help restore confidence among small landlords and law-abiding tenants and rebuild the healthy rental market. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Glengarry, Prescott Russell. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we are starting the second week here at the House. As we can see, the routine is starting again. We have a lot of work to do. We have many things to take care about. We have many bills. And during my uh, trip from Cornwall to Toronto, I've been looking at my calendar and have been uh, wondering what I have been doing during the time we have been in our riding because my uh, train fare is about four hours long. This is an opportunity for me to uh, look at my work and to read all the documents I need to do. So looking at my calendar, I have concluded that I've been participating in 145 meetings, 66 events, nine interviews, eight conferences and more. And without counting all the discussions that I had with people from all over my riding when I was stopping going grocery shopping or when I was uh, going to take some gas for my car. I actually appreciated very much all the discussions with, my, uh, with the people in my riding and I'm hoping I can meet them again in Oxbridge at the exhibition at the uh, sport complex in my riding. These exhibitions are actually a great opportunity for myself and for my team to explain what we do in order to improve life for Ontarians and in order to discuss some of the topics that have an impact on the people's life every day. I'm really happy to be able to meet all the people of my riding in the uh, next uh, coming uh, days. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Simcoe Gray. Thank you, Speaker. It is my pleasure to rise this morning to speak about the critical and unprecedented investments our government is making to ensure that the residents of Simcoe Gray have a bright and sustainable future. It is no secret that my riding of Simcoe Gray is one of the fastest growing ridings in our province as the release valve for the growth pressures in the GTA. Starting on July, I announced the investment of $120 million to build three much-needed new schools in Wasega Beach and Essa Township, as well as an addition to a high school in Tottenham. These new schools, Speaker, will ensure our students have access to state-of-the-art facilities in their own neighbourhoods. This September, I announced $95 million of direct investment through the Housing Enabling Water System Fund, starting with $25.4 million to the town of Blue Mountains for wastewater infrastructure to unlock over 2,000 new housing units. The next week, I announced a $69.99 million investment in Collingwood to expand the water treatment plant, a joint project with the town of Newtcombe that will unlock 24,000 new housing units. In August, Speaker, I was at the Stevenson Memorial Hospital in New Tecumseh to announce its capital expansion project is entering the tender process with a commitment of $350 million for this much-needed project. Shovels are expected to be in the ground by late 2025. Speaker, these investments totaling $565 million are tangible proof of our government's commitment to investing in critical projects to build our communities and improve the lives of our residents for generations to come. And Speaker, there's more to come. Thank you very much. The next statement. The next statement, the member for Hastings, Lennox and Edmonton. Good morning. Speaker, as MPPs, we all have an opportunity to engage with a lot of different people. But some of these opportunities really stand out as positive signs for the future. Recently, I had the wonderful opportunity to engage with some of my local secondary school students. At North Hastings High School in Bancroft, I spent time with the students in Mrs. Waterbury's Period 2 and Period 4 Civics classes. And this last week, for Local Government Week, I was joined at NDSS by Limestone School Board Trustee Tiffany Lloyd and both the Mayor and Deputy Mayor of Greater Napanee, 
as we presented to students in three different classes, Mrs. Claussen, Ms. Carmichael, and Mr. Heaton. Speaker, it was a distinct pleasure to share insights on how different levels of government work and how students can get involved now, even if they're too young to vote. We had great discussions and some insightful questions about local issues, healthcare, homelessness, transportation, and so much more. As a side note, Speaker, I've done a lot of these types of classes before, and it was awesome to have the students fully engaged with us and not on their smartphones. <laughs> Overall, the level of intelligent question, and in some cases, challenge to myself and my municipal colleagues, clearly demonstrates that the next generation of voters and leaders are prepared to handle all of the challenges they face. If these kids are a representative sample, our future is very bright indeed. To the students at NDSS and, and uh, NHSS, NHSS, I say thank you very much, and I thank you, Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Introduction.